Remembering the Westgate terror attack tomorrow will be marking 10 years since that particular attack. Now, we will be also having some stories with lined up for you. They will be setting base for a conversation. I'll be introducing uh, my panelists a little bit later on, Senator Hilary Sigay and Senator... So we also do have Senator Godfrey Osotsi, that is uh, from Vihiga. So we'll be having those two gentlemen to just try and make sense of uh, the state of the nation this morning. But you can talk to me. The X hashtag we're using this morning is MLiveNTV as always. You can also get in touch with me at Zainab Ismail at NTV Kenya. And uh, we'll continue with that conversation, all right? So President William Ruto has sent condolences to families of military officers who perished after a Kenya Air Force uh, helicopter crashed in Lamu County. In a statement, the head of state termed the incident as heartbreaking, adding that Kenya honors the fallen soldiers for their bravery in protecting the country's sovereignty. The Kenya Defense Forces said the helicopter crashed on Monday night while on night patrol in Lamu County. The crew and other military personnel on board were part of an air surveillance squadron intensifying day and night patrols and surveillance for the ongoing operation Amani Boni. The DOD did not indicate the number of those killed but confirmed the crash. The bodies of the occupants were flown to Nairobi on Tuesday morning. KDF further notes that a board of inquiry had been constituted and dispatched to the scene to establish the cause of the crash. Away from that, well, there is conflicting information on why Director General of the Communications Authority of Kenya, Ezra Chiloba, was suspended by the board chair Mary Mungai and Christopher Wambua, appointed as the acting Director General. Well, the board pointed out conflict of interest after an audit report was released, including applying for and approving his own loan. Insider information indicates that some members of the board are allegedly out to clip Chiloba's wings in a bid to front their own interests, including outsourcing mortgages from banks. And to visit Melita Oletengas reports. Details continue to unravel on why embattled Director General of the Communications Authority, Ezra Chiloba, has been shown the door by the board chair. According to an audit report, Chiloba applied for and self-approved a mortgage loan to facilitate the purchase of property between himself and one Jacob Wahungu without subjecting transaction details to interrogation by a higher authority. Chiloba is alleged to have purchased a house and a seven-acre piece of land which is beyond the one-acre limit violating the civil servant's housing scheme requirement. The report reads in part, the authority remitted the amount 25 million shillings to an account held at Equity Bank in the name of Kitale Hill Most Limited as per the seller's instructions. Further inquiry to establish the identity of the seller revealed the sole shareholder and director of Kitale Hill Most Limited as Ezra Chiloba, who is also the buyer. While private valuers placed the property at 25 million shillings, government valuers concluded the property's value to be 16.7 million shillings, meaning the property was overvalued by 8.2 million shillings. Former Communications Authority of Kenya Director, who is now the Secretary to the Cabinet, Masi Wanjao, has an outstanding mortgage of 18.3 million shillings, 63.6% of the total outstanding mortgages. The investigation also revealed that the scheme refinanced members for loans without evidence that they were undertaking upgrades on their houses. The investigations recommended that communications authority should outsource a mortgage administrator, which is mainly done by banks in Kenya, as it lacks competence to appropriately manage the staff mortgage scheme. But there is more than meets the eye. 
Insider information intimated to NTV states that Chiloba's suspension is a witch hunt to edge him out as he had asserted authority to streamline perennial issues of graft within the communication authority. The outsourcing of mortgage according to sources within the authority is because some board members have interests in certain banks where the mortgage should be transferred in order for them to cut out deals for their interests. Melita Olitenges, NTV. All right, we'll also be having uh, that conversation in a little while. Meanwhile, environmentalist Dr. Kaloa Green is now warning that the country is ill-prepared for the coming El Nino rains. Kaloa is accusing the national and county governments of not putting in place the required structures to mitigate the effects of the predicted El Nino rains expected to begin this October. Ruth Sarmoy tells us more. With the light showers already being experienced in several parts of the country, Dr. Isaac Kalua of the Green Thinking Action Party says Kenya is not prepared adequately for the projected El Nino season. There needs to be more awareness, information on the challenges that are expected, awareness on what crops need to be done. A section of farmers from the Perkera Irrigation Scheme in Baringo County are already dreading the upcoming rains for fear of post-harvest losses. Asa kwa kuwanza maale tunanikia maende, ikinyesha maende na loa maji. Kuna post-harvest losses mingi, na unajua mguluma kisha fika hapa. The maize farmers who had planted about 200 acres of maize want the government to construct for them proper shelters to avert losses. From the farm to this place, they may lose around 25 percent. At the drying yard, they again lose maybe another 25 percent. It is from such that environmentalists are calling on the government to act and avert losses like those that have been witnessed in Libya, Morocco and other countries. Lives are saved now when there is no rain. The lives to be saved thereafter is something else. It may be too late. In the slums, we need to have clear ways where rescue uh, units can be able to get their ways into those places. This is the time to move out of the encroachments on the rivers. It is sad that after such warning that we have, we will soon be crying as a country in uh, managing what we could have managed at a time that we could. Deputy President Regabi Gashagwa, who is expected to convene the National Emergency Response Committee next week to deliberate on the country's preparedness on the expected El Nino rains, says the government has mapped out possible hotspot areas and will release a detailed report. But we want to have a stakeholders meeting so that we can have a checklist of what every agency needs to do so that we can now tell the country we are prepared. Uh, to deal with uh, possible uh, floods and flashes and no other challenges that come with an, you know. Ruth Sarmui and TV. And police in Nakuru are investigating an incident where a traffic officer is said to have allegedly threatened to shoot the Viwandani member of County Assembly, Mwangi Muraya, following a scaffold at the Nakuru Assembly. Confirming the incident, Nakuru West Deputy Police Commander Francis Wahome indicated the police have retrieved CCTV footage from the Nakuru County Assembly for investigations and summoned the MCA to record a statement. Detectives say preliminary investigations point to a possibility of an offence against the officer, but the police are trying to establish whether Muraya and the officer had a scuffle before arriving at the assembly premises. According to Muraya, the traffic officer is said to have stopped him at a traffic checkpoint and after engaging for some minutes, the officer trailed him in the county assembly. It is there that some fracas ensued before the said officer allegedly pulled out a gun threatening to shoot. <laughs> Sasa nikamuuliza shida yako ni gani na mimi? Tafadhali nielezee. Nimekuuliza huko, huko nijibu. So nikaona anataka kuingia kwa gari yangu. Kamwambia usiingie kwa gari yangu. Niambie makosa ni mimi niko na makosa. Na kama ni gari, basi iko hapa ita utaistaki. Sasa alianza sasa Ananias askari wetu walikuja akaanza kupiga duru. Watu wote sasa wakajaa. Anajaribu kutulizwa, mimi nikasimama, nikamwambia basi 
wacheni yeye afanye chenye anataka kufanya kama makosa imeko imekosa hajaniambia baadaye dio ninaambiwa baka ni buduki alikuwa ananyang'anywa hatia ambayo tu amefanya ni hiyo eh, kukuja mbio ni kama kwa over speed na sasa unamfuata paka ikawa ni kitu ambaye ni personal because even a criminal utaikani utolee zile asira ambayo tumeona askari huyu akitoa katika bunge hii so wakati walikuwa wanasukuma na watu sasa wakaja watu sasa wakafika na deposa hawa askari eh dio wamejaribu kuvuta huyo askari lakini kabila hawajavuta yeye akakoku akakoku buduki ndipo sasa wakanyang'anya ya buduki kwanza buduki sasa ikapelekwa kule juu naye askari akafugiwa hapa lakini fujo ambaye alikuwa nayo ni nyingi sana kwa sababu hata wakati majority leader wetu wameenda kumuuliza kuna nini alitoa anaanza kunyonga yeye na na tai and the beheaded body of a middle-aged woman has been recovered in a thicket within Serena area in Shanzu in Mombasa County. The body was discovered by herdsmen who informed the local administration officers. Residents claim the deceased might have been murdered elsewhere and her body dumped in the area by her killers. Police arrived in the area and collected the body only for the dismembered body part to be retrieved meters away after they had left. Locals now demand that security in the area be installed and the criminals behind the murder apprehended. Jinsi mlivyo muona huyu mwili tumeupata hivyo hivyo. Yaani tulimpata tu mwili mtu tupu na hana kichwa. So amekatwa kichwa ndivyo tulivyompata hapo. Lakini cha kunisangaza ni kwamba hii msitu ni kila wakati, haipiti mwaka. Baada ya miezi tatu unakuta mtu ameokotwa huku, msichana ameuliwa huku, watu wameokotwa kule mifupa. Tumefukua mwili hapa mingi. Sio moja hii sio ya mwisho na hii sio ya kwanza imekuwa ikifanyika. And the county government of Nairobi has defended the school feeding program insisting that the first phase of the Dishi na County meals has been a success and that 80,000 children across 45 schools in Nairobi have benefited. Speaking at Olympic Primary School in Kibra during the distribution of the meals, County Executive Co Committee member of Nairobi County, Susan Silantoy, says there is no gap in the feeding program, noting that the schools currently not part of the feeding program will be covered in the second and the third phase. Silantoy further reveals that the Dishi na County meals program is set to feed 250,000 children across the 235 schools, both in ECDE and primary schools. The Minister of Education has applauded the initiative, saying that the rate of absenteeism in school has reduced now that children are being fed. So no, nobody will be denied food because they don't have that five shillings. We, will, we are working directly with our head teachers to just identify specific needy cases um, of children who are completely unable to pay and the county will still put that cost and support them. The feeding program is helping us in access, retention and completion. Absenteeism has gone down drastically, and not just in this school, Olympics Primary, but in many other schools that we have visited, children are now in school and learning. When uh, I compare it with the, the program that was in place before this initiative was established, parents were paying 25 shillings per day for a meal, and the number we were feeding was less than 1,000. The moment this initiative came into uh, picked up, we are now feeding 4,700. And while the government will, as from Monday, the 25th of September, kick off the Rapid Results Initiative for collection of passports in order to clear the backlog of over 87,000 passports lying at various immigration offices in the country. Interior Cabinet Secretary Professor Kithore Kendiki says the program, whose objective is to ensure that all the documents are collected within 30 days, will involve setting up of customer care tents for the collection purposes. The Immigration Department will also be publishing the details of the passports that are due for collection from various offices countrywide every Wednesday for five weeks in various mainstream and social media platforms. The published documents are to be collected the following week after the publication. The CS has warned that the government will then commence the process of disposing of the uncollected documents in line with Kenyan and international law after the one-month period lapses. of those passports must collect them within the time period we are going to specify. This period of notice 
will start running on Monday the 25th of September 2023 to allow members of the public receive adequate notices as to the availability of their passport, the office where that passport is lying, whether in Nairobi or in the regional offices, and the notice to collect that passport. We have in our possession at the moment 87,574 passports. Many of them produced a week ago, some two weeks ago, others one month ago, others three months ago. And President William Ruto will lead the United Nations security support mission in addressing global conflict resolution. Yes, President Joe Biden has lauded Kenya's willingness to be the lead nation on the front as interviews Bridget Sangana reports from New York. The 78th United Nations General Assembly is currently underway here in New York with more than 140 world leaders expected here to speak about pressing issues concerning the world at this time. The theme for UNGA at 78 is about rebuilding trust and reigniting action towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals whose target or deadline is in 2030. The host president Joe Biden has already officially opened the assembly calling on world leaders to maintain peace and avoid conflict. I thank President Ruto of Kenya's, I thank him for his willingness to serve as the lead nation of a UN-backed security support mission. Inequality has been highlighted as the key impediment in terms of the world coping with future pandemics. Experts here say that it is not a matter of if they will happen, but when they will happen. And they are calling on more funding and also the agreement of the world leaders in terms of ensuring that low-income countries in Africa and the global south are able to get access to vaccines in terms of research and also the production of the vaccines. Nation Media Group will be stationed here in New York for the better part of this week to give you the highlights of what concerns you as a viewer back home in the proceedings here at the United Nations General Assembly. Bridget Ghana, NTV in New York. All right, thanks Bridget Ghana for that and we'll be keeping an eye on the developments from that part of the world. Meanwhile, time to take a look at what's also making headlines in our dailies this morning. And we're going to begin with the Daily Nation. Of course, this is what is captured on the very front page of the DN. Four days of hell. That is 10 years on after the Westgate attack. And of course, Joseph Olelenku then was serving as the interior cabinet secretary. Well, he was a career hotelier by then. Had been a surprise to pick uh, for interior security CS for the newly elected president Uhuru Kenyatta. He was up to the task, he says, and promised to deliver on his mandate. But the tragic events of the 21st of September 2013 that left 67 people dead would change everything. And when it all started at around midday on that fateful Saturday, the minister had no idea of what was about to happen. It suddenly unraveled and uh, for four days, there was a situation that Kenya had not foreseen. This is a splash that is uh, on page seven of the DN. Just to give you a glimpse, let's take a look at that. Uh, six page, there you have it. It is an interview that was done. It's been 10 years since that particular attack uh, by the Al-Qaeda affiliated group Al-Shabaab terrorists who now stormed the Westgate Mall. They did unleash violence against the shoppers there. And for four days in that particular siege, 67 people died and Joseph Olelenku, the cabinet secretary for interior then was at the center of the operation to bring to order that situation had a lot in terms of going back and reflecting on exactly what transpired in that particular uh, you know scene and in that time all right and so you can get that full interview there and we also do have it on our website ntvkenya.co.ke uh, he talks about a number of issues including why the president had information prior to him uh, and he was leading that particular 
particular docket at that point. All right, so we will be also be just touching base on that in a little while. Meanwhile, let's see what else we have here on the front page of the DN, just a little bit on the front. Azimio split, that's the question. Karua Kioni front a new political outfit. Well, now Kenya party leader Martha Karua and Jubilee Party Secretary General Jeremiah Kioni yesterday fronting a new political movement, lending some credence to possible differences within their position, dubbed Kamwene Leadership Forum. The new formation of champion, uh, to champion the interests of the Mount Kenya region started gaining traction after Azimio failed to name a member from the populist region to the National Dialogue Committee. This will sadly be forming the basis of our conversation, part of it, uh, a little bit later on. So uh, I don't want to get too much deeper into it. But let's see what else is here. All right. EA Bill to give its female workers who miscarry six months of paid leave. And uh, that uh, means that EABL is going to be giving its female employees who lose their pregnancies up to six and a half months paid leave to grieve, a move that sets a new bar for other companies in the country. It's a policy that now aligns with uh, that of its parent company, Diageo, which uh, introduced the loss leave in September last year for its UK and Ireland markets as well. So that is uh, a development from that part. Meanwhile, uh, away from that, as we get the paper to stabilize here a little bit. All right, let's see what else we get. My land in is Kenya, heat maker. That is uh, Whitaker. Breath is last. And of course, it's the death that shocked many Kenyans and the world at large on Monday of the famous British folk singer Roger Whittaker, which has uh, certainly brought a lot of mourning. The superstar was born in Nairobi, by the way, of English parents, was very fond of the country of his birth. Roger Whittaker, who uh, died at the age of 87, made many hit songs, but his signature tune later in life was his tribute titled My Land in Kenya. It had a sweet lyrical rendition of his attachment to Kenya that has been popularly and very popular globally. And of course, yesterday, social media uh, was a buzz with tributes by fans of the legendary musician, eulogizing him for his musical prowess. He was a remarkable linguist and singer as well. And actually joining me in studio this morning is Senator Hilary Sigay from Bomet. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us. Good to see you. I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Roger Whittaker's My Land is Kenya, any other song perhaps. Are you, are, are you privy to some uh, of his songs? Uh, not many, but this one, of course, because it became the hit. Right. We sang it also. I remember at some point we sort of uh, transitioned it to be part uh, of, of our closer to the national anthem song in every other such event. Correct. Especially because it's sung by a uh, foreigner. Yeah, so it, it seemed a bit different, but it actually did resonate with many Kenyans very, at that very, point. Very. I think the older generation would remember it at that point because it was uh, quite uh, more of like a national anthem and, yes. you know, uh, back then. All right, so we let's see what else. to translate it to Swahili, it didn't work out, but I oh. think it's something we can have it. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. I think, uh, did we try to do that? In, in in, in those days, we, yes, <laughs> we I tried, remember because we couldn't understand so much exactly what it meant. Right. But when it's done in Swahili, it didn't, it didn't come out very well. Though. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's see what else we have. And of course, uh, Ruto to meet UDA officials at Bomas amid infighting. That's President William Ruto's call for meeting of all elected and appointed leaders of his UDA party amid infighting in his government. UDA Secretary General Cleophas Malala issuing a notice of a meeting at the National Gov uh, Governing Council, that's the top party organ, to be held next Friday at the Bombers of uh, Kenya. The, now, this notice lists the presidential address and party grassroots elections as the main agenda of the meeting. However, this meeting also comes at a time when some senior members of the ruling party have called for a cabinet reshuffle due to a number of issues which include the high cost of living, the issue of the exacerbated uh, rising fuel prices and the weakening shilling uh, and uh, arrogance by government officials. Senator, we, we've, we've seen that. We've seen the statements coming out from some of uh, the leaders uh, from Kenya Kwanzaa as well for calling for uh, the sacking of some cabinet secretaries within the, 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 the cabinet and, uh, you know, also calling for a reshuffle of the cab cabinet itself. What, so, in, you know, as we head towards this particular meeting expected to be on Friday, 
Is there infighting? Is there disquiet within the UDA party? Uh, well, as a member of NGC, actually what has been uh, summoned for the meeting is the, the entire uh, leadership that's elected and in office as the National Governing Council under the provisions of the constitution of the party. As a member of that uh, organ, then I would say uh, as far as the leadership of the party is concerned, mm. that's fine. There is no wrangles. There are no infights. It's, it's smoothly running. What we're trying to do is to stabilize the operations and also make sure that now the party does its, uh, I would call a sort of oversight role. Remember, we went into office in the context of uh, an agenda, a manifesto that was carried out in the plan. Mm -hmm. It is the party that carries that plan and therefore it's high time that we, we come out with that bit. Two, as regards members who, uh, you know, we are entitled in every platform that we get as leaders elected, as politicians from our backyard, to have a conversation, not necessarily that resonates well with our uh, mind as at that time, but it's an opinion that every other leader would have. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is, it is not uh, the party position that sometimes we also text it in uh, comments to mean it's come from the party. Mm -hmm. It could have come from a member of the party, but not necessarily. Are these some position. of the issues perhaps that is expected to be addressed in this particular meeting? Uh, definitely. Remember, we do not have an official government uh, spokesperson, for example. Correct. Such that Gay, as a senator, would get a platform in his county, Bamet, the Palungo constituency, addressing his constituents. His opinion on a number of issues might not necessarily be the official opposition, uh, official position of the party. And I'm very sure those will be some of the issues that we will be discussing mm -hmm. in the context of what is it that we had in the plan, what is it that we have done, what is uh, the next thing that we are planning to do, and how do we also bring forth, you know, uh, issues to do with uh, some of the performance of uh, government ministries within the executive officials like CSS. It's a very sensitive issue because Kenyans expect them to deliver. Mm -hmm. We expect them to give us results. And sometimes uh, I am uh, confined to my county. The comments I would make would, in most cases, be confined to my county because I want certain things to be done. Mm -hmm. A CS is running Kenya as a whole. A ministry is uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's for the whole country. Mm -hmm. So much that sometimes, well, we also definitely have to say that, especially when we are speaking to the people who gave us the mandate to be in office. Right. So I, I know it will be one of those very uh, key issues to discuss with. To have a discussion. And, and I, want to, I want us to hold on to this particular matter because we'll come back uh, uh, to it once we have uh, uh, Senator Osoti also joining us, oh, including the issue, by the way, Kimi Lili MP, Adidmas Baras is saying that uh, uh, Malala, who is the Secretary General, is antagonizing party members uh, within uh, that uh, particular uh, coalition that is the UDA all right uh, so I've lost the paper there for a minute but uh, as we take a look at what says what else is making headlines we are going to take a short break as I try and fix my papers here so I can get a clear picture of the other stories as well the hashtag we're using on X this morning is am live NTV at Zainab smile at NTV Kenya as well talk to us we're going to be back in a very short while. All right, welcome back to the program. We're watching M Live NTV this morning as we take a look at the state of the nation, a really a pass check on some of the issues that have been making headlines in the, the past couple of days. But also, this uh, was uh, another shocker that we received uh, yesterday. And of course, uh, it's on the conflict of interest that now surrounds uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya, who's now suspended. Director General Ezra Chiloba is at the center. 
Well, there you have it, a mortgage scheme offences behind Chiloba's suspension. Audit revealing several malpractices in mortgage schemes, including uh, property over valuation. And uh, uh, the gentleman here used to be the IEBC CEO that back then. He left the IEBC, that's the Electoral Commission, uh, with an in an integrity mark that still hanged over his head even as he was appointed as the director general of the communications authority of uh, kenya but there's a whole issue a scandal that uh, involves uh, staff of mortgages he it is said that uh, he inflated by almost two-thirds and he was both the buyer and seller in a transaction in which the CA paid 25 million among the reasons for his suspension. He was suspended on Monday after a board meeting and is also accused of gross misconduct of breaching the code of ethics, purchasing seven acres of land above the one acre limit, dereliction of duty for clearing staff who left CA despite having unpaid loans totaling to 28.9 million and understating loan balances of former employees. Now, this audit into the administration of CA's staff mortgage scheme reveals a serious lack of integrity and competence in the management of that particular scheme that has lent over 662 million to current and former staff and recommended disciplinary action against at least five senior officials, including Chiloba himself. Others include the directors of human resources, legal services, finance, and internal auditor as well. Senator Sige, this is another blow that we witnessed on Monday evening once we saw the suspension of Ezra Chiloba as the director general. Quite interesting coming at a time when uh, Kenyans are up in the air APRO is actually building because of the high cost of living and these are questions on the prudent use of public resources by government officials. What do you make of it? Um, if anything, I haven't fully read the uh, communic from uh, the board of the CA, mm -hmm. but uh, the excerpts of what I picked uh, speaks to an audit that was conducted by uh, the board. Mm -hmm. And out of the audit, a number of issues were of course discovered leading to the decision they made to um, kick out the uh, director general right. and uh, it is true and this is a conversation that we have had the member the president uh, is, is actually in the front line to say as long as we are not ready to take and bite the bullet and take responsibility for our actions or inactions for our commissions or omissions mm -hmm. in uh, offices that we are holding as of responsibility, mm -hmm. we will not fight the element of corruption. And mm -hmm. if it is then something that the audit has uh, revealed, uh, I, I know the board indeed had that mandate to say as a matter of uh, prudency in utilization of public resources mm -hmm. and in the context of the desired support to the president's and his policy and his way of doing things. Mm. That would be the way to go. And um, when we look at, of course, the, the first item which I picked in terms of uh, uh, the report, issues to do with non-disclosure of uh, outstanding facilities mm -hmm. or mortgage facilities or uh, uh, the uh, abuse of office uh, element, which, which I think is one of the things, though I do not have the details, it is one of those uh, conditions that would warrant such a decision to be uh, conducted. But mm -hmm. of course, I, I, I leave it to, uh, I'm sure uh, Chiloba previously has been in high level offices. You've just mentioned it. He was in IEBC and the office that he was holding is equally an IEBC. He's, mm -hmm. he's a learned fellow and uh, I'm very sure he definitely will also come out to have his part of the story had, and mm -hmm. it's at that time that we can now compare uh, what the board is saying, what he's saying. But, well, that is the report that we have. It is what we are reading. It is what has happened. And the president, remember, uh, cracked the whip. The first item that uh, I remember he did was to say, look, if it's about Kemsa, remember the story of Kemsa, that he decided to take the drastic decision. None uh, of the previous leaders had taken such a position and uh, it sent out a message that that is the way things are to be done. If you don't do the right thing, definitely you know the consequences. If mm -hmm. you do that which is also against the policy, against the law, and against largely the interest of Kenya, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Definitely, you will have to also be shown uh, the door. Mm -hmm. That way is the only way we will also show Kenyans that we really desire to have a change administration and once we do it, the rest will follow. But I mean, it's unfortunate to have this, although, yes, of course, it's a report. Yes. Uh, investigations are yet pending to be yes. able to establish the, uh, you know, uh, the case uh, yes. to be substantive. However, it begs the question as to how much power uh, ho office holders of, of these particular offices have, yes. really. Yes. When you're talking about uh, that particular report noting that Chiloba himself applying and approving a mortgage to facilitate the purchase of property between himself and another gentleman, Jackson Wakungu, noting that uh, the DG purchased a house and seven acres of land, which is more than the maximum one acre in contravention of the requirements of the civil servants housing scheme. That, you know, it really begs the question, how much power do you wield once you hold such kind of office? It is true. And when such reports come out, it helps us and also those in office to appreciate that whatever you do behind uh, the light at some point depending on the board that is in office depending on the goodwill that comes with the leadership of any given time of an institution it will come out mm -hmm. and it's it's, it's 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 not the best that we say you abuse the power that is why I believe there is the offense of abuse of office let us uh, preach the gospel because if you are doing it at the point of leadership definitely any other junior person who would have as little power as they can at least given at any given time get they will abuse it so mm -hmm. it is it's, it's a higher pedestal it's a higher calling when you have the power make good use of it because it is transient you have it now you don't have it tomorrow mm -hmm. and it's true that it's not uh, business as usual in uh, government sector because of the ruling court that the principal has uh, taken in terms of his leadership style in terms of the desire to change also those who are wielding power to make good use of that power when they are in office and for the benefit of the people whom uh, they are leading at any given time in such uh, high offices. All right. And also joining us this morning, uh, Godfrey Sotsi, Senator Vihiga, good to see you. Good morning. A little bit late, but it's fine. <laughs> Not too late. However, let me get your thoughts on this. So we, we're on the paper, but, but we were winding up on this particular story. But I'm sure you have something to say about it. Ezra Chiloba now suspended as the Director General of Communications Authority of Kenya. A number of issues coming out of that uh, uh, issue audit revealing several malpractices, especially in terms of the mortgage schemes. Property of evaluation, uh, it goes on to apparently, allegedly, uh, buy property worth 25 million uh, shillings, which was valued at 16 million shillings. Uh, buying being the, 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 the seller and the buyer of, of a particular property. So, yeah, so this is another scandal that is riddling this uh, suspended uh, DG of the CA, but also coming at a time when Kenyans are asking, you're talking about prudent use of resources, uh, the cost of living is really rising. Where, where do we stand? really uh, when such scandals uh, you know come to to the fore well uh, <clears throat> you know we are reading about it in the media now uh, but uh, from what I see there is more to it there is more to it uh, and we have not had the side of Chiloba uh, you sit in the committee of ICT and uh, this particular uh, morning mm -hmm. we expect uh, Ezra Chiloba and other uh, players in the ICT sector to appear before the committee on a different matter. So maybe uh, the committee of ICT will want to know what exactly happened. But my reading from far is uh, that there are internal uh, intrigues within the communication authority. So there could be more which, than meets the eye. Yeah, there could be more than meet the eye mm -hmm. because uh, I mean, uh, the issues that uh, Chiloba is being accused of mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, in my view, uh, looking like someone is after him. Uh, so we'll wait to see what is happening. But mm -hmm. I would uh, want to say that there must be a clear distinction between the role of the board and the role of management. Mm -hmm. In some of these uh, parastatals, some of the board uh, chairs are, are very overbearing. They want to uh, appear to, to, to be involved in day-to-day -day management of those parastatals. 
uh, and the CA is one of them. I say that because I sit in the ICT committee and there are a number of instances where uh, that has come to light. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be quick to judge uh, Ezra Chiloba and the allegations that have been put on him in the media uh, since uh, uh, the matter came to light. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is a matter that we need to dig deep and understand what's happening at uh, a communication authority. Uh, I know there are some individuals within that board who are keen to make a quick kill. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe uh, Chiloba could be a stumbling block to their schemes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not be quick to, to judge Ezra Chiloba. Uh, Ezra is a fantastic uh, personality. Uh, I have worked with him uh, uh, in some instances. Mm -hmm. uh, save for the issue of IBC, which we all know about it but generally is a fantastic individual and it's not fair to judge him in the media about uh, why he should be uh, fired. Uh, but but, he it has, would, but he has, with, he, a, with an audit report, he, it would be has, unfair to sort of uh, turn a blind eye to some of these issues that have been raised by the board itself. You see, even the issues he's being accused, the mm -hmm. former CEO, who is now the secretary to the cabinet, uh, Mary Wanjao, right. he's being accused of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know why the board took time uh, just to come and uh, uh, pinpoint uh, Ezra Chiloba uh, and not the former CEO who was there. Mm -hmm. That's right. why I'm saying there is more to it. Uh, I think uh, with the time, we'll begin to know what exactly is happening at the communication authority. All right. So we'll give it time to see. And you will be meeting Chiloba in the morning for different matter. Perhaps you'll be I posing the question. I hope he comes question. because he's supposed to come in his capacity as right. a DG. But now of, he's suspended. communication authority. So maybe, uh, but that is not an agenda for today's meeting. Right. Uh, but certainly as a committee, we would want to find out what is happening. Okay. All right. We'll leave that at that uh, this particular point uh, we've had a look at that Lenko my four days of Westgate hail uh, hell and uh, 10 years of that uh, September 21st uh, attack of Al-Shabaab at uh, the Westgate Mall also another story a KDF soldiers die in helicopter crash uh, where an anti-terror operation within Boni Forest in Lamu County turned tragic after several KDF officers so, uh, soldiers lost their lives in an aircraft crash through official KDF reports, uh, though the KDF reports provi provided scant information about the Monday night incident. Sources told Nation that the helicopter went down at around 8 p.m. Uh, the reliable sources say the helicopter was on the Somalia side of the border when it crashed about six kilometers from the camp. We had the message uh, from President William Ruto terming the soldiers heroes who had committed themselves to protecting uh, the country. All right, and uh, the condo and a message of course there from the president and uh, by the time uh, we filed this report KDF had not revealed the number of casualties uh, although the sources that uh, a nation spoke to uh, talked about eight bodies from this particular incident all right and uh, finally just on the DN state warns uh, warned of El Nino as imminent rains spark jitters Thus, environmentalists were now challenging both the national and county governments to make the arrangements to deal with the adverse effects of the anticipated El Nino rains, which is expected to begin in October. All right. And uh, on the same, you have Deputy President Tigada Gashiagwa announcing that the national government is uh, formulating a strategy as well to deal with the adversities that may arise from this El Nino rain. And uh, this rainfall is likely to be characterized by flooding, according to the Deputy president uh, who says it was a national emergency and called for adequate planning as well. We'll be keeping a very close eye on the developments of this particular <coughs> matter as well, the Nino rain, uh, which is causing quite a lot of jitters, especially among environmentalists, but also Kenyans who are at areas of pro, uh, risk, who are at uh, prone risk areas of flooding as well. Also, WHO study, half of the people with hypertension unaware it's a it's it's a, it's about um, a study that was done by who which talks about half of the world's population living with high blood pressure are unaware of their condition while four of the five people with the condition 
are untreated. It's a report you can read on your own on the DN. But also very quickly, the standard uh, chose to go with uh, this particular story of Ezra Chiloba and why he was shown the door. A number of issues as to that as well coming out of that, uh, thrown out after he was sucked into a multi-million shilling mortgage scandal. And you can also see Secretary to the Cabinet, Mary Wanjao, there as well, who's been named in that particular audit report. We've had that conversation. Uh, but all, what else uh, they covered here? Uh, let's see, second page, that page, fourth page. Let's see, Judicial Commission, members on fact-finding mission in counties as well. On the Business Daily this morning, Kenya targets Chinese imports in new tax evasion crackdown. Uh, Chinese imports set for tighter scrutiny as President Ruto's government intensifies a purge on entities and individuals who undervalue products shipped from the Asian nation, defying and denying Kenya billions of shillings in terms of taxes as well as uh, how increasing interest rates set bank for profit windfall and also hospitality seminars rent cost taxpayers extra 5 billion shillings. All right, this is a story that is also uh, within the business daily. Top government officials gobbled an extra 4.99 billion on rent, hospitality and seminars in the year end of June compared to the previous period, defying calls to cut the wastage of taxpayer funds and ease the pressure on the exchequer. Let me hold on to that as well. We're going to come back to that. But also very quickly, Boda Boda Wafikiwa Taifa Leo Inasema, Mswada Uliombele Seneti Utanyosha Sekta Hio ambaye wa hudumu wake hukaidi kanuni na kuto wajibika. Masharti makali kwa wa hudumu wa piki piki. That is boda boda operators. Wataka ubeba zaidi ya biria mmoja, watatozo faini ya elfu shirini, ama wafungwe jela kwa miezi sita. Wataka upatikana kwenye njia za kupitia kwa migu, kutozo elfu shirini. Wataka ushirikiana kushambulia mtu kufainiwa elfu mia moja ama kifungo cha mwaka mmoja jela among many other uh, uh, things listed here in terms of uh, the regulations that is uh, this is I believe uh, in the Senate Senator Sige in terms of uh, trying to regulate the border border sector yes right and uh, it's something that is long overdue mm -hmm. it should have come at a high uh, at, at an earlier time uh, remember in most of our hospitals, mm. there is a designated ward. It's in Just like, like for border, border for accidents. Border, border accident victims. Right. It is, it's, it's sad. It's something that we should just take it as one of top priority. Because, well, border, border is cutting across in supporting and facilitating transport from mm. one point to the other. It's cheaper. It is uh, accessible to a number of the uh, struggling uh, Kenyans, the mm -hmm. Hasla uh, community. But the most unfortunate thing is now they are non-compliance with the traffic regulations. You think these proposed fines would be able to sort of curb uh, the level of un unruliness that we see from s a section of the operators? Yes, because uh, what will happen is that uh, it will act as a deterrent. If you are put in and you are supposed to be fined this much and you actually can get uh, your license cancelled or you can't get back to the road, mm -hmm. it will help in reducing because a number of them will appreciate the need to comply with the traffic regulations. Right. They will also. And it's about sensitization. It's a big thing. Mm -hmm. It's a big conversation that when we open up our minds to appreciate the consequences of compliance with the traffic regulations and rules, we will reduce because the amount of resources that goes into, uh, you know, development of these wards. I mean, I know uh, in Tanwak Hospital, this is in Bamet County, yeah. there is a fully designated ward. Mm -hmm. And the highest number of patients and casualties are from border border uh, accidents. Mm -hmm. It is high time that we have that candid conversation mm -hmm. and make it also, uh, you know, make them feel that I would rather comply with the law and live for tomorrow and also make this border border and mere living than to rush and not get there. Mm -hmm. It is so, so 
timely that mm -hmm. we should fast track it where possible. And well, I know it will go out for uh, public participation. Right. The vines and the amount might come down, right. but it is high time that we go towards that regulation. Indeed. Yeah. And finally, uh, Senator Sotsi, also on the paper on the DA uh, on Taifa Leo Boda Boda of Ikiwa. Uh, from your view, this is much needed? Well, uh, you know, the, the Boda Boda challenge in this country uh, really um, is uh, really. It's a conversation exposing, we've been having for. It, it's quite exposing a long time. the larger problem we have on uh, unemployment. Okay. Uh, because our youth are not able to get jobs, so the easiest and the quickest job they can get is border border. Most of those guys riding border borders are uh, even university graduates. Mm -hmm. So it's a much bigger problem than uh, we think. Um, all I can say is that yes, it's good to have laws, but this country is not uh, insufficient of laws. We have enough laws. Uh, the problem that we have in the border border sector mm -hmm. is largely NTSA. Where is NTSA? Mm -hmm. NTSA, they are not doing their job. They are the ones who are supposed to issue licenses. They are the ones who are supposed to ensure compliance to, to traffic uh, regulations mm -hmm. and all that. We are not seeing much from them. Uh, and uh, you cannot say that uh, now because of the challenges we have in Porta Porta, which are a result of laxity mm -hmm. of uh, those who are supposed to manage the, the, the sector well, mm -hmm. and you are coming up with a law. And I have read that law. And when I read that law, I get surprised. The law is sponsored by uh, Honorable Boni Halwale, uh, who is the ma my majority whip. Uh, and I get surprised because it really contradicts the position that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa had during the election. They said that they are going to take care of hustlers, they are going to take care of border borders, mamambogas. But here, they are the ones who are coming up with the law which appear like it's going to uh, really meant uh, punishment to the border border people. Whereas we have a whole institution which we fund using taxpayers' money called NTSA, which is doing nothing. Can we start by asking NTSA to do, to do their job, mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, appearing to be coming up with uh, laws uh, so, where, you're saying, where border, border? so you're saying it's an issue of implementation. We already have, uh, we already the, have the, the laws. laws in place. We already have the regulator. Yes. Uh, NTSA needs to p sort of pull up its socks. But then is it a question of, um, you know, th that particular law being uh, unfair to the hustlers, that's what you're saying? Or is it just creating a safe space for operators within, within that industry to work in a, in a safe space. You, you know, one thing I agree is that we need some, uh, some uh, normalcy in the, in, the, in the border border sector. That we agree. Yeah. But the question is, how do we do it? That's why I'm saying, before we even think about this law that Boni Halwale is proposing, can we task mm -hmm. NTSA to do their job? All right. I have a feeling that they are not doing their job, they are laxity on their job, and they must be directed to do their job because okay. we are financing them through the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, uh, say that because this organization is not doing their job, then we create more laws. All right. What about the laws that are already there? How effective are they? Uh, and uh, who, is, who is not doing its job? Those are the questions that we need to ask instead of coming up with a very punitive uh, laws like this one. But the border sector is one sector that has uh, really suffered because of the increases mm -hmm. in uh, uh, petroleum prices. Now you are coming and say you are going to add more fines. Because if you read that law, any basic, uh, any basic offense, mm -hmm. it is fined. Mm -hmm. In the 20, range of 10,000, 20,000, 20, 20, 20, where mm -hmm. is Boda Boda going to get that money? These are people who barely make 200 shillings a day. Mm -hmm from their hard work. So I think uh, that law, when I read it, uh, it really contradicts the position that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa had uh, mm -hmm. before the election, that they were the ones who are going to take care of the hustlers, they are going to take care of border borders, mamambogas, but they appear to be turning around and saying, no, we must target these uh, hustlers. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that's unfair. Um, uh, yes. I, yes. Uh, 
You know, you, you can't purport to say that you want to support uh, Kenyans, the hustler uh, generation, by allowing them to die. Part of what Kenya Kwanzaa is doing, which I agree with uh, Senator Osotsi, is to ensure that the institutions which are mandated with certain roles, mm -hmm. in this case the NTSA, are also made to act accordingly. And it's true that uh, NTSA previously uh, was uh, sleeping on the job. That one is a fact that we have read in the statistics that we have seen lately. Right. Remember right now on NTSA, uh, the first, the initial board that was put in place was uh, sacked within uh, three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the reform agenda. That is part of the decisions which the cabinet secretary is doing to ensure that such an agency indeed acts as it is expected in law. And mm -hmm. the team that is in office, I believe, has begun the process of, uh, you know, acting within the mandate of NTSA. And of course, in, in, the, in, the, in the near future, we definitely will be looking at changes that will come towards implementing the laws that are in place. Mm -hmm. But to say that uh, by legislating, we are punishing Kenyans, that in itself is not, uh, uh, it's, it's not appropriate to come from a legislator. Otherwise, what other business would you be doing in uh, parliament mm -hmm. other than legislation? And two, this is not to say you are punishing every Kenyan. You are punishing a Kenyan who is in breach of the law. It is going to help them. It is not taking them out of business. So it's not a gener general punitive uh, it is you know, not. Yes. measure and, and against... Yes, I'm saying right. this is something that will go out there to the public. Mm -hmm. He acknowledges the fact that a, a, a huge number of casualties are actually as a consequence of non-compliance with the regulations or on traffic laws. And secondly, it is this border border sector that has created mm -hmm. uh, a good uh, number of uh, employment for both learned and non-learned uh, Kenyans. That is true. That is a sector that is giving us a lot of employment to the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And so, if we don't regulate it again, you can imagine if we are taking in 100,000 of Kenyans who've gone uh, to a uh, university level, for instance, and they are not uh, supported to make sure that there is some level of compliance with the regulations, we will be losing these brains also that has gone out there to say, this is the closest source of uh, employment that I can get for now, as I await on this hope. Right. that Kenya Kwanzaa is building to say, let us invest in job creation, let us open up opportunities for Kenyans who have gone to school in order to also earn a living for now and for the future generation. Right. So we, it is not mm -hmm. a bad law after all, and mm -hmm. it's not wrong to say, uh, you know, it is uh, uh, sponsored by Kenya Kwanzaa. I mean, it's so surprising that uh, it's, <laughs> since it's being sponsored by Boni Halwale, it becomes a bad law. <laughs> no. I is, mean, it, is it because he it, it came from a leader who is affiliated to Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, Senator Sotsi, or, or, or is it just by the mere fact that the laws you say uh, you, you, work against the you, hustler? You know, you know when the, the, w w it is not just a law by name. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Senator Sige has to look at the content of what that law is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a problem with uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, fining, any small thing, a fine, a fine. Whereas, uh, you know, I started by saying that we are not insufficient of the laws. Remember, we have Michuki rules. How much has been done to implement those rules? We started implementing them. Remember, at, every, uh, at some point, Boda Boda were putting on a helmet, they were putting on gloves, they were putting on a jacket, but because the institution that is supposed to enforce that law, mm -hmm. they went to sleep, and now we are back. So we are now saying, okay, let's leave the Michuki rules, let's now create something else. That is where I have a problem. And this, that's something else we are creating. Mm -hmm. We are uh, uh, apportioning fines on every small mistake that a border border is going to do. So what is going to be the effect? The effect is that we are going to kill the sector. And uh, I can tell you, Zainab, uh, border border is one of the emerging uh, serious sectors in this economy. Mm -hmm. So we must uh, balance between mm -hmm. uh, the law uh, and uh, uh, also being able to manage these youth. You can imagine if all those youths who are in border border sector can uh, stop what they are doing, what they'll do. They'll become criminals. Mm -hmm. 
So, so I think there is a balance. So you're talking the about balance mostly is, about the balance of enforcement. Is, let us audit the laws that we have already. Right. How, how much have we implemented that, those laws? And then now we can say that this has failed, so we need to fix it this way. All right. Uh, instead of coming up with many laws that eventually are going to mess up the entire sector. All right. Now, just to move away from that now, there's a story here that was filed by our senior political affairs reporter, Ibrahim Karanja, yesterday. And uh, let's have a look at that, then we get into our conversation. Now, Kenya party leader Martha Karua and embattled Jubilee Party Secretary General Jeremiah Kiauni now says that Kenyans are on their own as far as excesses by the Kenya Kwanzaa regime are concerned. The two have expressed their dissatisfaction with the Kenya Kwanzaa giving a status report of the government just two days after Azimio gave a comprehensive scorecard of Kenya Kwanzaa's first year in office through the what is now known as the Kamwene Leadership Forum. The two are now giving credence to claims that there could be cracks within Azimio, especially over the opposition's decision to stay put in the talks, despite the issue of the cost of living still going up. Let's have a look at that report, then we'll come back. Kioni and Karua through the Kamwene Leadership Forum say the new formation is not in Kenya Kwanzaa but not necessarily in Azimio. We are talking about the KK regime. They have shown Kenyans that Kenyans are on their own and we are reminding Kenyans we are not helpless. So there is a feeling that we are going nowhere, I can tell you. And it is upon KK to prove us wrong. According to Kioni, Kenya Kwanzaa has spited the National Dialogue Committee, seeing as the cost of fuel and by extension the cost of living has gone up, despite it being a key agenda item pushed by Azimio. If I was the leader of Azimio, I want to tell you, I will not be walking to those talks. Kindly be woke. Be woke. So that if the KK regime is not serious in these talks, then we should know of our next move. Sources within the Azimio coalition now tell NTV that during last week's crisis meeting, there were attempts to have Azimio pull out or at least suspend the talks due to the Kenya Kwanzaa's continued contempt. While the push to withdraw was largely bought by Karua and Kioni, coalition leader Raila Odinga and Waipa party leader Kalonzo Musioka hashed the proposals, thus choosing to proceed with the talks, a move that may have disappointed the two. They cushioned the increase of fuel last month, the month of August. To me, just to ensure that we were calm when we had foreigners uh, mm -hmm. visiting us during the climate change. These are con people. And I am calling upon our dialogue team at Bomas. Please don't be conned. And don't play part of that coding. We will remain in that Bomas place. We are in Azimio. We are not moving from Azimio. But I can tell you, and our Kenya Pia Wajue, Though it is the first time for Karua and Kioni through the Kamwene Leadership Forum to publicly take a position different from that of Azimio, it is seen that the outfit is what Mount Kenya leaders outside government may use to chart their own path. Ibrahim Karanja, NTV. All right, and uh, there you have it, that report by Ibrahim Karanja. Now comes the Kamwene Leadership Forum. Uh, the two leaders who are heading that particular uh, sect of the Azimio coalition, uh, the Kamwene Leadership Forum, that's, uh, you have the NAC Kenya Party leader, Martha Karua, and the battled Jubilee Secretary General, Jeremiah Kioni. They're saying they're neither in KK at this point when it comes to speaking on uh, Kamwene Leadership Forum agenda, nor are they in Azimio. So they are fronting the interest of the Mount Kenya region. Let me begin with you, uh, Senator Osotsi. So this is quite interesting. Sentiments coming uh, from those top leaders uh, from the Azimio coalition, uh, you know, saying if, you know, I was in a position, if I was Baba at this point, I would not be holding talks within the National Dialogue Committee. I should be out that we're being taken for a ride by the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, government. Well, uh I think this story is uh, speculative uh, because I attended that uh, meeting that uh, it's being called a crisis meeting. Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify here, uh, that meeting was not a crisis meeting. 
mm -hmm. uh, as has been put. It is a meeting that, uh, first of all, received reports from our various technical committees on uh, the progress of the talks and uh, the preparations that the technical teams are making towards uh, uh, the, the, the talks. The second agenda was to um, receive um, the, the scorecard uh, of the, the Kenya Kwanza regime from our, uh, our technical people, and uh, that presentation was made. Uh, so it is uh, very, very unfair and uh, irresponsible uh, to allege that uh, it was a crisis meeting. There was nothing uh, of a crisis to be discussed. Mm -hmm. It was purely to discuss our agenda in the talks, how to engage, what issues to bring up, and uh, also uh, to receive a report of the scorecard, which was released by our leader, Raila Molo Dinka. But you have uh, another scorecard that was but, released yesterday, a status report but, of, but on the other hand, of the Kenya I want to say, I want to, I want to say, uh, we uh, in the meeting agreed that the leaders should go to uh, various constituency, uh, various regions and talk about the scorecard to the people. So uh, Honebo Kioni, Honebo Karua, they are quite in order to go and engage Mount Kenya on the scorecard. I have done that in my, my county. I have talked to my people about the scorecard even after Raila had released the, the scorecard. So. Talking about the scorecard after that major press conference of Azimio does not uh, indicate any element of dissent. Uh, the other factor is that... Uh, so you're the, saying there is no point of uh, divergence? Yeah, there is no point of divergence. Really. Those, what those two particular leaders said yesterday and really what is happening and what is uh, on the table for the Azimio agenda, especially when it comes to the National Dialogue Committee. We did not make that up. I mean, when you're looking at what uh, Kioni said, he says, we are going nowhere with these talks, but we are in support of Baba and the decision he has taken. But however, if we were... If we were I'm coming there. Right. I'm coming there. So the Mount Kenya leaders are free to engage as a, as a region. And in fact, for me, uh, this is the best thing that uh, the Mount Kenya uh, group within Azimio is doing. Because for a long time, as Azimio, we would be, we have been wanting uh, our leaders within Mount Kenya to engage Mount Kenya uh, directly. So what they are doing is good for the coalition, and I, I I want to urge them to continue doing that, so that it should not be about Raila all the time. We want even uh, people of Western Kenya to engage their people directly. We want the people of course to engage their people. Then Raila is overall. So there is nothing wrong with it. But I disagree with uh, Kioni when he says that uh, we need to uh, disengage from the talks. Mm -hmm. We have, at the moment, as we are speaking now, we have n no reason to disengage. Eh? We have no reason to disengage. We have the, the, the two chambers of parliament have passed a motion uh, approving the, the talks uh, and uh, they have agreed on their issues. Uh, they have agreed on uh, Kenya Kwanza issues, they have agreed on uh, uh, Azimio issues. We still have uh, some days remaining. Mm -hmm. Remember, they were given a timeline of 60 days. It is only after 60 days when we can say the talks have collapsed. But trying to appear like uh, we want to uh, stall the talks uh, just because uh, uh, of um, issues uh, that we have with the talks. I think that is uh, very unwise. Uh, and, and in fact, this is a platform to talk about the cost of living. That is where Azimio, even in our presentation last week, we, 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 we talked about our strategy on how to engage on uh, issues of cost of living. Let us present them and see what happens. So it is uh, not uh, wise to start talking about both sides of the divide. Mm. I have heard people, and I mean, yes, we, I have heard had people on the Kenya Kwanza saying that we want to pull out. Mm -hmm. I have heard people on uh, our side saying we should pull out. But uh, I think I must commend uh, William Ruto, who is a leader of Kenya Kwanza for remaining uh, uh, firm on the talks. I have also to commend Baba, uh, who is our leader of Azimio for remaining firm. Let us give it a chance. Uh, so that we see what happens. 
After that, then we can know what to do. But mm. it's too early to start saying we pull out. And uh, it really does not make sense when you see a member uh, of, uh, from either side, a member of, uh, who is uh, part of the membership of the talks, uh, trying to castigate the same talks. I think it's not uh, uh, something good. Mm. We'd rather have other people doing that, but not members uh, of the bipartisan team or uh, members of the technical team from both sides. All right. So I think let's uh, follow what Baba said. Baba said, let us give talks a chance. Ruto has clearly said he's a willing to engage. Okay. It's only a few people from either side who uh -huh. are making noise, but our leaders are very focused on the talks and the Kenyans are also looking forward to see what is this talks going to achieve. Okay. But even as we go on with the talks, uh, we agreed in our Zimio meeting that that does not stop us from engaging on issues affecting Kenyans. And we'll come back. We I will, know you're talking about the issue of the cost of living. We will engage on the cost of living. Right. We will engage on uh, taxation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop us from engaging. And that's why Raila has talked about it. Okay. He has come out strongly on the issue of taxation. Mm -hmm. He has come out strongly on the issue of cost of living. It doesn't stop the rest of us from engaging on those issues. And we'll come back because it is part of the agenda that uh, uh, is under the talks we, uh, at the National uh, Co Dialogue Committee. But uh, Senator Sigay, you have those sentiments coming from uh, some of those leaders. We've also had sentiments coming from some leaders of the Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, you know, uh, side as well. You have Ndindi Nyoro who's also been very vocal about these particular talks. Are we taking Kenyans for a ride? Um, uh, not so, uh, Zainab, because uh, the two principals have talked. The president has uh, given a clear indication that he is very keen on ensuring that the talks go something for the Kenyans. Similarly, the leader of ODM has mm -hmm. done the same thing. And so we are not in this, in this talks, uh, we are not taking Kenyan for right. Remember the two people who are leading on the part of uh, uh, the, the, the dialogue committee are mm -hmm. senior Kenyans, the leader of majority in the National Assembly and the Honorable Alonso Mushaka on the other side. Mm -hmm. The only unfortunate thing, of course, is the fact that uh, we, we are coming into these uh, talks uh, we, uh, in, in the context of our completely two different political dispensations. Mm -hmm. The formations have got their own issues. And so I would say the bottom line is there is goodwill and there is commitment on the part of the principles of the two uh, groups to engage in talks which will give Kenyans an outcome that is very relevant. That is why they have identified on the items. Remember I sat in the first uh, team of, of the bipartisan uh, group that had uh, been given the uh, responsibility that this team took over from. And uh, it was because there was goodwill on both sides to have these engagements. But then uh, back to um, the comments by Kioni and, and Mother Karu. Mm -hmm. it, it's quite unfortunate that uh, we actually can engage on comments by uh, people like them. I mean, who is Kioni, for example, in terms of uh, the leadership as we start as it now? Remember, Kioni is struggling for relevance, having been kicked out of a Jubilee, and uh, he's, he's surviving on, on a court order. So basically what he's saying, and more uh, importantly, and unfortunately, because remember he sits in the technical team of the Azimio group. Mm -hmm. And this is what we've said, Azimio no longer exists. Azimio died. So what we have is ODM and a few remnants who are homeless now, right now, uh, like Kioni. They are not in Azimio uh, because Azimio is ODM, but they can't come to Kenya Kwanzaa, of so, course, because uh, of So you're saying there is no in. coalition? So, it, that is that is that is a matter of fact. That is why Kioni can afford to make the comments he's making. Yet he sits as a member of the technical group in the National Dialogue Committee, mm -hmm. representing. Uh, which should which should 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 um, you know essentially uh, be held to a higher ground because of the mere fact that he actually sits within the technical. Yes, but team. remember he says I've read the paper. What it's what it's uh, reported mm -hmm. here. It's a, a reaction, it's a knee-jerk reaction following that meeting which Honorable Osotsi had said was not a crisis meeting. It was one of the normal meetings where they are getting scorecard, they are getting reports. Mm -hmm. Only that someone now like you and of course Mother Karuo who has completely been uh, put in, in, in the sidelines by the people who 
actually gives us the mandate to speak on their behalf. So this is a lost lot. That is number one, I would say. Two, they do not represent the interest of Kenyans. Remember, they lost. They were actually told, you cannot speak on our behalf. So what they are talking about, they are talking about their selfish interest. And therefore, on the one hand, they are saying these talks should stop. On the other hand, he's still holding on to what he terms as the issues which are affecting Kenyans. And so it's, 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 it's quite... And the uh, reason why they're calling for the talks to be suspended at this point is saying the Kenya Kwanzaa side uh, is not adhering to uh, you know, some of the conversations that are actually happening at the National Dialogue Committee, which is you know, the issue of cost of living, uh, interference of political parties, uh, I think that was uh, someone, uh, someone who spoke to our reporter, but on a condition of anonymity, but saying those are, this, it's a general feeling as to why, uh, why these talks should be suspended. That Kenya Kwanzaa is actually taking a zimio for a ride when it comes to sitting down and having substantive conversations on these concerning matters. The second uh, issue that you've just raised is what I was talking and speaking to. Mm -hmm. Kioni is struggling to survive in Jubilee. Kenya Kwanzaa has got no role. These are parties in court. We have absolutely no role in uh, the political party and what goes on in Jubilee. So he's raising it as an issue so that he gets a platform to survive. We play no role. We have said that as much. And uh, if uh, members of Jubilee feels like they want to uh, cross over from one political formation to the other, they are free. Article 38 of the Constitution of Kenya gives them that money. <coughs> completely nonsense with reference to Kenya Kwanzaa interfering with it. The other issue on cost of living, Honorable Sotsi and myself and the rest of Kenyans have talked about it. It is not a one-off thing. It is not that we will go to a shop, a supermarket today and say, I want to buy the cost of living today at this price. We can't give a price tag, we can't give a timeline. It is an ongoing conversation and that is one of the items that the team from Kenya Kwanzaa have said we definitely have got to discuss. And it is... Uh, it's, it's Senator Sosi, to, uh, I know you wanted to respond to what uh, Senator Sige said. Then we'll come back to the cost of living after the break. Well, uh, you, uh, Se uh, Senator Sige has said there is no more Azimio. I think he's living <laughs> in another planet. <laughs> because uh, Azimio... I'm, I'm, I'm in, 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 Azimio, in Kenya. Azimio, you know, up. it has uh, a number of parties. That majorly we have ODM, WIPA, we have now Kenya, we have Jubilee. Those are the main parties, but we have other parties also. And uh, so far, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, uh, Azimio has done its part uh, as an opposition. Uh, we have put uh, this government uh, in check. And, and, I, and I think uh, we will continue growing stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Hone Bokioni, uh, despite uh, his... Uh, his views on uh, whether we should disengage from the talks or not, I, I think uh, he has also done a fantastic job uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a face of yeah. Jubilee uh, within uh, Azimio. He's uh, tried, he's been consistent, uh, and um, uh, maybe the only thing I would advise him is uh, to heed the advice of uh, Raila Odinga that uh, let's give uh, dialogue a chance. Uh, let's discuss and see what comes out of it. All right. uh, because uh, Kenyans wanted us to engage. Uh, and uh, Azimio agreed to engage. Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa agreed to engage. Mm -hmm. Parliament has given them the legal backing they need. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's uh, wise to allow the talks to go on mm -hmm. uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, a strategy of addressing the concerns raised by Kenyans. We right. cannot say that we pull out because uh, what other options do we have? If okay. we pull out, it means we go to the streets yeah. uh, and uh, uh, you know what it means. All right. So uh, we, we, yeah. we want to give it a chance and as Raila has said that uh, if the talks fail, we have other options that uh, we are going to explore as a coalition. Uh, so uh, I think Azimio is getting stronger and stronger and very soon we are even going to get uh, some members of Kenya Kwanzaa to our side <laughs> oh, who right. are dissatisfied with uh, the running of Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. Remember they have even called uh, 
uh, uh, their crisis meeting. Right. It's not a crisis meeting. It's, it's, it's a normal. Uh, it's a normal. <laughs> uh, it's a normal meeting. Uh, but there were still it's some concerns fact. that were raised there. Can we take a break? Please allow us to take a break, right. and then uh, when we come back, we will continue with that discussion. The hashtag we're using is MLive NTV. Talk to us at Zainabi Smile at NTV Kenya. Yeah, I know. No, I just. All right, welcome back to the program. You are watching AM Live this morning as we canvass around some of the national matters making headlines in the country. And of course, one of uh, the highlights of the conversations that we'll be having lately, of course, it's on the issue of the cost of living. And with that, uh, public debt repayment has crossed one trillion shilling mark. Uh, and uh, this is actually for the first time in history in the year to June with the government spending hitting 3.16 billion daily average on debt repayment through the 2022-2023 financial year. National Treasury spending on debt repayment rose to 306 billion during the year to hit the 1.15 trillion and this is according to the latest data by the controller of budget the public debt stock also crossing 10 trillion by the end of june leaping to 1.6 trillion from uh, 8.6 trillion last june well the spike in public debt and repayment is attributed to the weakening shilling which has added more weight to the external debts while at the domestic level treasury has been kept in a borrowing from paul to pay peter situation with investors rejecting long-term treasury bonds for shorter term treasury bills and even with that because the issue of the cost of living is such a, a hefty one uh, it is uh, among the key issues that uh, uh, is being under the, uh, you know under the agenda of the discussion in the national dialogue committee but has also uh, created a bit of a clash in terms of uh, the two technical teams that uh, are having a conversation on that among the other issues as well you have uh, the points of departure uh, contained in the National Dialogue Committee document christened harmonized and bundling of the framed issues and according to the document the bombers team has locked on on how to navigate this skyrocketing cost of living whether or not to audit the 2022 presidential election as well as the issue of the boundaries delimitation but we will focus on that issue of the cost of living senator osotsi that's where we are it appears uh, you know things are quite thick for kenyans at this point yes i agree things are quite uh, thick because if you are going to pay uh, one trillion uh, debt uh, that translates to about uh, three point uh, about three point uh, one mm -hmm. uh, billion shillings daily uh, which will go into repayment of debts uh, for this financial year right. and uh, i want to agree that uh, part of the problem is uh, uh, the weakening kenya shillings which means uh, because most of these debts are paid in uh, the dollars mm -hmm. which means we are going to pay a slightly higher debt right. because of that uh, currency conversion so it is going to be a problem uh, and uh, i foresee a situation where we are going to have a adjustment of the ambitious uh, kenya kwanza budget uh, so that to, to, to reflect the shocks and uh, maybe they do away with some of the projects they had proposed and focus on repayment of uh, debt. Uh, but um, we see a situation where they are not going to stop borrowing uh, because uh, I saw the, the draft budget review and outlook paper uh, that uh, stipulate that uh, they, they want to increase borrowing to uh, by another 100 uh, and three billion shillings right. in, in, in this financial year. Mm -hmm. So that uh, will uh, uh, enhance the, the problem that we are having. Mm -hmm. It's going uh, to increase so, that debt ceiling. So, so, so we look forward to see how they're going to manage the situation uh, because you remember one of the reasons why they, uh, they gave for increasing taxation was that so that they can have money to pay debts. Right. So you want to see how that works out. And at the same time, they have a very ambitious uh, budget 
uh, with uh, so many infrastructural programs in there. So uh, I think uh, it takes uh, um, a lot of wisdom to manage the economy in this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as someone rightly put it, you cannot manage economy through propaganda. You manage economies through uh, coming up with viable uh, measures uh, to address uh, economic uh, realities that we are in now. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think the focus should be on uh, how do we come up with viable uh, economic measures that are going to address uh, the challenge we are having. And isn't and that then, what the leaders from the Kenya Kwanzaa team are saying when they say it's time to bite the bullet, that uh, there is no sugar coating, that uh, Kenya is in a bad place and that this economy was mismanaged by the former administration allegedly? Uh, you see, that's why I said one of the reasons why they increased taxes was uh, that they were going to pay debts. Mm -hmm. So we want to, uh, they, they, they have enough money, I pre presume, to now pay this money mm -hmm. without having to do a lot of adjustment. So we'll be watching to see uh, how they are going to maneuver around it. But uh, I have to come back to your point uh, and what I had raised earlier, that you cannot manage uh, economy through propaganda. What the former regime did, they did their best. Uh, let, let's, let's focus on what we are going to do, uh, what they are going to do as Kenya Kwanzaa. I think that's more important than keeping reminding Kenyans about so and so did this. Uh, you know, they are, they, in some of their promises, they talked about 100 days, 100 day lapse. They talked about three months, three months lapse. They talked about six months, six months lapse. Now is a year, they're still talking about the former regime. I think let's let them move on, start implementing things the way Kibaki did. He never complained about what Moi did. We know what Moi did was worse than what Kenyatta could have done uh, in his uh, ten-year tenure. But uh, President Kibaki was so focused uh, and uh, he tackled the problems that were there. And we, be, we, we started seeing some positive uh, trends in our performance of our economy. So I want to urge uh, our colleagues on the other side to borrow a leaf from Kibaki and focus on addressing the economic issues and uh, maybe reduce politics. You know, uh, sometimes, sometimes when you want the economy to grow, the people driving the economy must engage in less politics. You see now, uh, cabinet secretaries in Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, uh, some of them are engaging in politics on a day-to-day -day basis. Eh? These are people who are supposed to be helping the president to address uh, issues of economy but the general are now assertion, on top of their vehicles campaigning. The general assertion on this particular matter is the fact that uh, to, there's a piling pressure on the government to quickly uh, fix the situation. And so they're saying, for us to be able to address this situation and you want us to fix it, you must know where we came from. And we came in at a time when the coffers were empty, according to what the government says. Well, that is not necessarily true. And it has been confirmed it's not true. Uh, because the same time the Honorable <laughs> Rigabi talked about coffers, is the same time they drew money to buy cars and all those things. So where did they get their, that money? All right. So what I'm trying to say is that I think it's high time for, the, for uh, the people who are in government to focus on the ball uh, and deliver to Kenyans mm -hmm. without uh, keeping on reminding us about what someone else did, what he didn't do right. Uh, you promised us you will do it. You will reduce cost of living. You promised us you will not overtax us. Mm -hmm. You promised us that you will not overborrow. You promised us you will uh, ensure the economy is stabilized with the, within a short period of time. Just do it and uh, reduce all this uh, politicking around it. Right. And especially for people who have been given executive functions in government. Uh, I think it's not fair for them to uh, stop doing their work and engage in day-to-day -day politics uh, uh, of uh, partisan politics All right. of uh, 2027 and uh, who will be what you know that's a problem like okay. what i've seen moses Kuria doing uh, i think that's highly unnecessary uh, a person who is supposed to be the image of trade engagement 
uh, should do more than what he's doing. All right. Let's hear from um, Senator Uh Thank you. Uh, and and, and uh, for once, I, I want to also uh, appreciate the fact that Senator Sotsi is uh, uh, appreciating the fact that it's time to roll up our sleeves and, and push the agenda of uh, improving the economy of Kenya by the ruling uh, coalition Kenya Kwanza. Though we want to say we do not want to talk about history, remember Zainab, history informs uh, the future. And that is actually one of the reasons as to why we must tell Kenyans that this is where we've come from, this is where we are, and this is where we are headed to. And, and, and so when, when, when um, the, the control of budget gives us these statistics, <coughs> it, it makes a lot of sense. It gives us the fact that we all know uh, the first charge on the consolidated fund is mm -hmm. to repay the public debt. Anything that we get, if it is 10 shillings, the first charge on it, we must use it to repay the public debt. And the report gives us uh, <coughs> uh, you know, information to the fact that over 70% of what we collect as taxes today in Kenya is directly utilized to repay the debt. Whatever is remaining, in this case, which is 30%, is to be shared across the other government responsibilities from the recurrent expenditure to now uh, <laughs> the economic transformation uh, <coughs> programs and agenda that the government has put in place. And so the government is trying. It's true, it's, 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 it's a very sensitive topic to discuss about. It is something that uh, we must <coughs> say it as is because <coughs> if we do not have this conversation, we will not change. When we told you that we are using 3.16 billion daily on average to repay debt, it tells you the situation and the economic status that we are in. It is not easy. It is not one of those things that you would say we just open it up and, and, and deal with it. And so the, the effort that the government has done as of now is to as much as possible, despite the weakening uh, shilling against the dollar, the effect of climate change, and of course now that history, we, we, we can't shy away from it, uh, honestly speaking, because we must clear, like this debt which we are repaying of 3.216 billion daily is not uh, money that was borrowed in the current financial year by the current government. We are clearing a debt that was borrowed by the previous government. And, and the options which are put in place, uh, he, my colleague agrees that uh, this is the only option that we would have. And when we all have come forward to accept the fact that we must work towards achieving an improved economy for the people of Kenya, it makes the work of the government easier. And it is true that, uh, you know, we, we, we want to be devoid of politics when we engage on these very serious issues. But it is the Azimio team that uh, initially, I mean, for the first uh, three months or coming into government when the Kenya Kwanzaa is setting up uh, its institutions and the team of uh, the people to lead, the second uh, three months became uh, a bucket for the exchange of uh, non-acceptance of uh, the government in office. And so it, it takes away the attention from rolling out on the programs and executing them to sometimes also dealing with what happened like the other day in terms of demonstration. There is no way you can put a blind eye to people demonstrating and say, I'm focused. But then the president has led the way and said, we have an agenda for the people of Kenya and we must improve. And when you look at the effort of what has been done, this is something that most people ordinarily do not want to talk or they are not given the right platform. Mm -hmm. When you look at the sectors that the Kenya Kwanzaa has done, it speaks to the effort to improve the economy. Because when we create employment, for example, because that is one of the areas the president has said, we will invest on it. Let us invest on subsidizing uh, production. That way we are creating employment. Mm -hmm. The other day, which is something that we, we, we need to also give it uh, to Kenya Kwanzaa, we've employed teachers, 600 billion uh, budget on education has gone into employment of over 50,000 teachers, something that has never happened from the history of this country. Mm -hmm. It has also, in the current policy on uh, financing the education sector, it has enabled those who do not have to have the percentage of 
the people who will benefit is sufficient enough to say this is the direction that we are going. The rollout on the CBC program will also help in improving <coughs> some of these challenges. There is so much in terms of agriculture. This is one of the issues that if we are very honest to ourselves as Kenyans, we will have out of the subsidized fertilizer program, out of the proposed uh, reforms in the sector, in uh, the coffee sector, remember the deputy president came back the other day from uh, Colombia where he'd gone to deal with the coffee. We also have had conferences on the reforms on the tea sector. This way, this is one of those ways with which we will say in the near future, the economy of Kenya will improve because the moment that farmer has got something to buy medicine to improve his or her health, to take his kids to school, it is a, a, a knock-on effect to the rest of the economic uh, sectors but, that we but have. Do you have questions with, with regards to how the government is also spending money? Yes. Uh, for example, you have hospitality seminars, rent costing taxpayers an extra 5 billion shillings. Why? Because top government officials are gobbling up that extra 4.99 billion on rent, hospitality and seminars in the year ended June compared to the previous uh, period. This is defying the calls to cut the wastage of taxpayers' funds and easing the pressure on the exchequer at this point, right? Let's, um, yes, let, yes, let me, let me just, just respond to this. Uh, this is actually also, I think that must be the headline of uh, also the business it, daily. It is part, of the, actually, yes, daily, part right. of the business daily. It's from uh, data for also from the control of budget. Yes, there was a conversation the other day from our brothers from the opposition that <coughs> uh, the president is uh, hoping from one country to the other. Mm -hmm. The president is uh, spending a lot of money to do some of these things. Um, they don't speak as to the direct benefits. The amount we are talking about here, the 4.9, which we being told is an extra expenditure on uh, rent, hospitality, seminars, mm -hmm. uh, and, and among others. Mm -hmm. There are very positive outcomes that has come out of these sessions. <coughs> when we look at the image of this country globally, it has changed. And Zainab, we also must speak to this benefit. We can't quantify. We cannot come and say now, out of these trips the president has made, we have lost. Honestly, we have achieved more. I, I but is it going against the same spirit of what the same government is saying in terms of cutting spending on non-critical issues such as this? It is actually cutting spending on non-critical issues. For example, hosting uh, the, the climate summit is indeed a critical issue. Going out today in the morning, we saw the president has signed, I think uh, I should be able to get this. Today he signed uh, <coughs> something on, 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 on with, with the U.S. on climate, uh, on, on electric uh, 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 border borders to be in the country. Something that if it's actually <coughs> going to benefit Kenyans at uh, 8.7. This says that the president uh, has met today with uh, MCC CEO Albright during signing of a USD 60 million, uh, that is uh, translating to 8.7 billion second threshold program funding on acquisition of electric buses. What I'm trying to say is that this, if it is seen objectively in the prism of what are the direct benefits that we get, these are on critical expenses that has brought in more benefit than just mere reporting that we are utilizing this much. I wanted to give you a bit of okay. statistics. On, let's, let's allow me from, to do okay. it because it's very critical. Very quickly, because I, I sat with the ambassador of Kenya in, in, uh, in, in, in the UK. And these are things that we don't speak about. Uh, that was on Monday. Out of this foreign relation, <coughs> there has been a very good G2G engagement because of the uh, foreign, uh, you know, Minister of Foreign Affairs policy on this. And uh, these are the statistics he gave me. I know this one you don't have, mm -hmm. the source doesn't have. And so, out of the engagements that I've had uh, between the government of Kenya and other uh, foreign uh, nations, uh, in, 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 in London, within the period that they have changed, uh, the hospitality sector has facilitated 1,100 Kenyans who have gone out in the hospitality se sector to, to, to get employment. In the agriculture, they took uh, 102. In, in terms of the collaboration, this is something I didn't know. The last collaboration between the government of the UK and Kenya is in the year 1980-something, in the Buruburu projects. Right now, they've got four projects on the basis of the 
goodwill and the good engagements that they have done, they are coming into the Nairobi City uh, Railway in the education <coughs> sector, the Commonwealth scholarships, which Kenyans are getting out of the good relationship. When they got in there, when SCPs got in there, they were 25, they, ha they now have at 40. Queen Elizabeth's scholarships, they were zero, they now at 40. Uh, Mastercard was zero. It is now four hundred. Okay. These these <coughs> things Kenyans do not get, and these are the benefits that come from this. There is also the MOU that was signed on on the issue about nurses being uh, uh, taken out into those countries. But at these the end of it all, it that goes saying, back to the issue of prudent use of resources by the yes. same government that talks about how we need to cut down on spending. You understand? Uh, foreign foreign Kenyans who are in foreign countries working is one of the greatest uh, honor to our economy. Okay. If and when we take them out on the basis of convening these sessions, we will be able to appreciate that okay. we are actually not wasting. Instead, we are directly investing in areas that will improve on our foreign exchange earning as well as Kenyans getting employment. Right. I mean, we saw the other day what was uh, the numbers in, in, in Embakasi where, you know, the recruitment of the KDF. Right, it, it and a very small crazy. So yes. they ha actually talks this, about the issue of unemployment it, in the it's, country. It's, a, it's well. a huge thing okay. that I would say the government is not wasting. The okay. government is spending. And we must also tell it as is because we cannot host such high-level events without spending. All right. Uh, yes, Senator Sotir. Uh, you know, my colleague has spoke for too long. <laughs> uh, I, I'm giving you... He's, uh, <laughs> he's cut down uh, on your time. I but yes, uh, you can respond to, to some of those things but, you uh, But, uh, you know, uh, Zainab, you know, uh, he has talked about uh, various things that the Kenya Kwanza regime has done. But uh, let me remind him that uh, if you look at economies which <coughs> have challenges like what we have now, mm -hmm. uh, they are in a recession basically. Uh, when you are in a recession, you, 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 there are some things you stop doing. One of the things you stop doing is that you, 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 you reduce taxation. You don't increase taxation mm -hmm. in a recession because the idea of uh, taxation basically takes away the money from, from the citizens and therefore they cannot engage productively uh, in, in a recession moment. Mm -hmm. So what they should have done now was to look at supporting uh, programs that support the citizen to, to be more productive mm -hmm. and not to uh, engage in uh, higher taxation because higher taxation, whereas one, one of the things that it brings is uh, increased revenue, but sometimes it does not generally bring the increased revenue. Uh, because uh, when productivity is low, when uh, investors are moving out, uh, that means you are going to heighten the unemployment problem, you are going to reduce the circulation of money in the economy. So it, it, it has a negative effect on the economy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I think these are things that we will start feeling as Kenyans. Uh, but uh, on the <coughs> other hand, when he talks about uh, we inherited an economy that was uh, in Tata's economy that had been mismanaged, yes, they can say that. But you see, when you say that, you must have some more authority. People must see you doing, doing better, mm -hmm. coming up with the programs that instill hope in the people. When you tell people that we are going to cut spending on an essential uh, uh, items like travel, like uh, training, mm -hmm. like um, uh, conferencing, mm -hmm. uh, and then you tell Kenyans that you are going to reduce uh, expenditure on these things so that you save 300 billion shillings, and that never happens, then uh, you lose public confidence. When you tell people that, uh, yes, we have a problem with the uh, high cost of fuel uh, because of uh, challenges on the global stage, so what we are going to do, we are going to engage in government-to-government -government deal mm -hmm. uh, to, one, reduce the pressure on the, uh, uh, on the Kenya shillings, and two, reduce the cost of petroleum. And then that deal does not yield anything. Instead, the cost of petrol continues to rise, continues to rise, 
then you lose the public confidence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that's why initially I said, can we, uh, can those in government come up with practical measures on how to address the economic situations we are in now. So you're saying the issue of increasing uh, VAT on field products, the issue of increasing taxes, the housing levy and all these things will not really fix the issue it uh, will not. that we're experiencing You see, right like now housing, housing, let me give you a simple <clears throat> mathematics. They said they are going to uh, raise about 89, Eight, billion, 89 billion in the next four years uh, through housing. Right. At the same time, they are saying they are going to construct uh, how many houses? Was it 250,000? 250, 250, right. 250,000. If you do, can someone do that maths very quickly? 89 billion. But essentially, I think what the president had said so, with regard to the housing levy was more about creating employment uh, <clears throat> for people, especially in the construction sector and all that. That essentially was the essence of the housing Which employment? Levy. Which employment? Let me tell you, let me give you an example. In my county, when they were coming to launch the housing project, yeah, when they were clearing the ground and uh, trying to create room for, for all that, they used prison, uh, prisoners to do that. Mm -hmm. They should have started by giving youth that job to do it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to make money. I hope and I'm, and I, I hope I'm, I'm certain, I'm, I'm and I'm certain, I'm certain, <laughs> I'm certain. No one knows how this housing thing is going to work. Mm -hmm. Because this is an arrangement with the private sector. Okay. So they are coming, the private, the, the private developer mm -hmm. is coming <clears> with his own people, he's coming with his uh, own subcontractors, so how are the local people going to benefit from it? Right. So what we are trying to say is that, uh, yes, you talk about the measures that you are going to do mm -hmm. as a government, but are those measures practical? Are those measures going to add value okay. to, to Kenyans? Are those measures going to get us out of this economic hole we are in? We've been told to wait for mm -hmm. about two, two years, perhaps, to see uh, that uh, fruit uh, of the labor that the government is putting in terms to, to of be honest, to, right. we, to be honest, that will not be achieved. I want to be very fair to them. But you agree because, that we need time, that the government because, needs time? You know why I'm saying that? Because <laughs> when you increase taxation okay. with the current situation that we are in now, the effect will be economic uh, downtown. Okay. Because... We are seeing investors leaving this country, going to other countries. They are going to Tanzania, they are going to Uganda. They are relocating from Kenya. What does it mean? It means we are going to lose uh, revenue in terms of tax. We are going to lose, uh, uh, our people are going to lose jobs. So clearly uh, the situation people are going to doesn't lose jobs. look good. Right. So that effort <clears throat> in trying to raise more revenue okay. uh, may not necessarily be very productive to, to, to Kenya Kwanzaa. Right. So I think they need to rethink, especially the VAT increase, which I'm told they want to even increase it to 18%. 18%. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the housing tax, mm -hmm. it is, a, it is, a, it is killing. Low. It is killing employers. Mm -hmm. It is killing investors. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at what are the benefits to All be right. To be gotten from this uh, housing and what are the effects on the economy okay. you realize the effects on the economy are far more negative All than right. the benefits that we are going to get from the houses that they are going All to right. uh, develop in the counties okay thanks senator and uh, <clears throat> i see we've almost uh, run out, of time. out of time you wanted to but even as you add that by the way i got a response here from uh, moses courier uh, yes. the other day he was accused of uh, being a little bit insensitive to Kenyan's plight. But he says, look, dear Kenyans, on Friday the 15th of September, I made some comments indicating that the price of fuel is likely to go up in the coming months owing to global dynamics. I have since been advised by people like Dr. Boni Halwale and his master that the statement was incorrect, insensitive and arrogant. I am made to now understand that the price will come down. I apologize profusely since the air to air <coughs> human but yes literally two seconds um well um uh, you know uh, to air is human that is what exactly, is human. Uh, cs <coughs> said but then again in his apology remember this is a very sensitive topic right the issue on price of fuel is a very sensitive conversation that yeah. we must have and uh, we have uh, over time talked about why is it that the price is going up we talked about the 
uh, the exchange rate, the right. dollar against the shilling. Okay. And this is something that is done uh, deliberately by, you know, uh, it's a decision by the big boys in the market. The supply uh, All right. of fuel is a challenge. Okay. Uh, I was surprised and for my colleague to say that uh, housing will not create employment. I, uh, it's easy to criticize. I want to encourage him to watch this space. We're actually In two done. years' time, right. he will talk something else we'll, on the and same we'll platform. And we'll call you. When call you. Definitely. I, I'm, I'm more, more than ready to come. In two years' time, we're going to have this conversation we have again. This conversation and then we're here. going to and have to Kenya review. will not be the same again. All right. Thank you so time. much, Hillary. Also, we will have joined the Holy <clears throat> Coalition. God for your thoughts, see Hilary yes. Sige. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Senators, for joining us this morning. We're actually out of time. My name is Zenab Smile. Winnie Lubembe is coming up. Stay with us.